Okay, uh, good morning. So today we'll start uh, software engineering. So advanced software engineering, you have to follow fundamentals of software engineering by Rajiv Mod. The textbook fundamentals of Rajiv uh, software engineering by Rajiv Mod. So most of the contents are there in that book, uh, except uh, I think it is fifth module. In fifth module, you have to follow uh, two research papers. There are two research papers. It is the topics are system dependence graph and task dependence graph. So that will be covered in two research papers. You have to learn those two research papers. So other things are there the text of this regime model. Okay. So we'll first go into the first chapter, that is uh, introduction chapter. So software engineering. So what is this software engineering? So it is an engineering approach for software development. So that means uh, software itself is an, uh, we have to follow an engineering approach for software also. Like in the case of uh, civil engineering, you will be following an, if you want to construct a house, you will be following an engineering principle. Uh, one more thing you have to interrupt me. Uh, if there is some uh, fault in the mic or something, you have to tell me because I won't be able to see your chat right now while I'm presenting. Okay, upon the interruptions, you just inform me. Um, so, or uh, doubts are negative, you have to interrupt me. Okay. So, uh, is this uh, software engineering? So, it is an uh, engineering approach for software development. So, if you want to construct a house, civil engineers, what they do is they will draw some plan, uh, they will uh, do some estimates, soft, uh, estimate a kid. After that, they will be uh, starting building their house. Mm. Or they will be drawing the dry, uh, drawings uh, based on. Then they will be estimating all these things. After that, they will be starting developing this. Similarly, in software engineering, also, if you want to develop a software, we have to uh, we have to go through a systematic approach. So it is a systematic approach to software development. So it's a systematic uh, approach to software development, and it should be cost effective also. So it should be cost effective also. That means we have to uh, reduce the cost also. If we are following the software engineering, we will be able to reduce the cost of software development. Uh, why we will see why this engineering approach is needed to do something. So if you are, if you want to build a wall, if you want to do, uh, build a wall uh, in your house, in your compound, so you will be asking the contractor to build that house. Uh, build that wall so he will easily construct that wall he may take a few because he knows how to construct this wall and also he will employ he will have some workers and uh, he will have few days of work and he will complete that wall construction and if you ask the same person to build a house he might be able to con construct it he might be developing So he might be uh, developing it for the first time. He might be uh, developing, uh, building a house for the first time, but he will be able to complete the house because he knows how to construct a wall. So based on that, uh, he will try to construct. Maybe he will succeed somewhat. And, but the cost in developing will exceed the actual cost if you are doing some engineering principles, if you are following some engineering principles. And if you ask the same person to, develop, to uh, build a, uh, five story building. Sometimes he won't do at all. If he starts building, it will fail at any time because he has not go, uh, he has not studied any engineering approach to this building construction. So the engineering approach is important. So in the case of software, also we need to follow this engineering approach. Otherwise, software will fail. There will be some errors. There will be uh, many errors in our software final software, and finally the software will fail. So in order to have a systematic approach, we need to have a, a systematic approach for software development also. Then only it will become cost effective also. So software engineering is basically, it's an engineering approach for software development, which we can build to use in a systematic and cost effective manner. Okay, so we'll be studying how to develop a software in a systematic approach. Other number of basic uh, thing in this advanced software engineering course. So, is software engineering a science, a science or an art? So, like science, uh, software engineering is like science in some approaches. If we say 
software engineering, if we want to develop a software, we will be taking uh, knowledge from the past. So software engineering, actually, there was no engineering uh, before 1980s. Software engineering in the 1980s, there was no software engineering at all. People used to build some softwares. Somehow they will succeed or somehow, sometimes they will fail also. So they will simply start writing the code and all. So later on, uh, how software engineering developed was uh, later on they studied this earlier softwares. They tried to study all the earlier softwares developed and from based on that knowledge, they tried to develop new software. Our science is also like that. Science will uh, study the, uh, get the knowledge from the past and try to develop new principles from science. So software engineering is also like that. We know how, we have the knowledge about the past and we try to learn uh, the, from that knowledge and we try to develop new software. So software engineering is somewhat like science. But scientific solutions are provable principles. But software engineering is not, we cannot prove it. But scientific, if, if we learn something based on this uh, previous experience or previous knowledge, this science are provable principles. We develop some provable principles. But unlike science, software does not have any uh, provable principles. There is no scientific solution for this software. And software engineering can have several solutions. Software engineering, if you develop some software, there may be several solutions for a particular problem. So if you want to have an authentication system, we can give fingerprint, we can give face recognition, we can give password, we can give pins. So there are different uh, solutions for a simple problem. But in the case of science, we have a unique solution. We will have a unique solution or solution now in the case of science. But in software engineering, we have, have several different solutions and we will select the best one for it. And uh, software engineering, it is well understood and well documented principles. It is well understood and we will document all these principles in software engineering. Okay. But in the case of art, whether software engineering is related to art, is it, is, is it is software engineering or art? But uh, art is, uh, they don't have ill, uh, they don't have any principles. They will draw something. For art, example, if you have a painter, if you draw something, if you're an artist who draws something, then there is no principle to draw. You will simply draw something. And if there is no specific principle, you should do like this. So, but software engineering is not like that. We have a well defined, uh, well documented principle. We should follow like this. There is some step by step procedure for software development. In the case of art, it's not like that. So, that is how. Software engineering is different from science and art. Okay. Next is uh, evolution from art to engineering. So actually, in earlier days, uh, software development was considered as an art because only a few people know how to write code. Uh, if you consider 1960s, 70s, and all 80s and all, if you consider only certain people know how to write codes and all. They know how to write some so it, it was considered an art they won't reveal those things to others also so every code was hidden and nobody knows what is written inside only people will be running this software and will get some output and all so uh, they don't know what is happening inside the thing. so software people were considered as artists in earlier days because there was no principle that was followed and we, uh, uh, as an outsider we don't know what he has written but we will get something so it was considered as an artist. And so from art, uh, it was made as a craft. And the craft, is, so what, uh, based on this artistic talents, they try to develop. So people will be writing something like this. We will be studying all this. Uh, if, you, if you are an artist, you will be learning or studying all these pictures. And based on the pictures, you will give, get an idea how to draw a building, or how to draw a tree, like that. So similarly, uh, people start try to study study this software so which is developed by this artist earlier artist and from those they try to develop some principles so software became a craft and from that craft software was evolved to become uh, engineering so certain principles were laid down so there should be some principles in development like that so it, uh, earlier it was considered an art 
then later on it became a craft so because uh, there is some un based on this unorganized use of past experience people try to develop this object appa appa adu craft ay adu kaynittu what they did was they studied all the softwares that were developed and they tried to develop some engineering mechanism how to develop the software so it became an engineering system angane aanu vannathu so earlier days it was uh, from art it was artist then it became craft so it was like this from it was art then it became craft then it became engineering so in the uh, earlier case it was ad hoc programming style was followed when it was artist and craft and all people used to have this ad hoc programming style no is there is no technology or no principle that should be followed people will write some code if you are asked to uh, we will interact with the customer the customer says i want this software building software the people will what the software people will do they will start writing the code chuma directly they will start the code they will test it if there are some errors they will again correct it they will test it correct it like this it will go up so it is known as uh, ad hoc programming state or it is also called as build and fix so they will build that software and they will test it if there are some errors they will fix it again build it fix it like that it will go on so it is also known as code and code and fix type or it is also known as exploratory style of development as well so earlier days it was like this uh, exp exploratory style of development there is no fixed principles at all people try to develop some software they will start from the, with the customer interaction they will get some idea they will start developing the code directly they will go into the code and they will try to develop that software sometimes they will succeed and most of the time they will be failing if it is a very large software automatically they will fail if it is a small software they will be able to develop so now also you can develop this uh, you can use this build and fix type if you are asked to uh, build a simple building software you can go for this exploratory type because it's a small problem you know what will what should be the input and what should be the output what should be stored you can directly start coding itself it might work maybe it won't be free from errors but there will be bugs or errors in the program but still it will be a software but if you are asked to develop a uh, office package you want to develop ms office or ms like uh, excel or something a uh, very huge software if you would try this approach it will automatically fail because there will be lot of bugs and it will be very difficult to maintain that code everything will be a problem okay so earlier days it was like ad hoc programming said people will start building i will go come into this export right later okay so it was uh, this evolution was like this it was earlier days it was art so if you draw a graph like this uh, based on technology this is technology and this is time okay t yeah, time t stands for time so it was like this art earlier days it was art here this stands for art then it became a craft for some time it became a craft so based on pre past experience it became a craft then after that based on the art and craft all the softwares developed uh, we tried to develop an engineering principle so it became an engineering thing as technology grew it became an engineering thing so it was the evolution pattern was like this okay hope it is clear uh, ഇൻഡോസ്റ്റ് <laughs> it is a reverse thing hardware is very less hardware cost is very less compared to the software cost if you want to develop a software you may require millions of rupees but if you want to develop uh, if you want to buy a hardware it will cost less than 1000 so uh, this thing you just you have a, a, a graph in your text and all you just read this thing so large amount is spent nowadays on buying the software than buying this hardware that's the thing you have to note Okay, now we will skip this thing. Uh, 
and software development project. So we have to study what is the difference between program and products. So program, it lacks program is, is something written uh, by a novice programmer, like in the exploratory style, something somebody someone will be writing some code. That software will be working, that program will be working, you will get some output and all. But the problem is it lacks good interface. The interface may not be good. There won't be any documentation. If there is no documentation, it is very difficult to that maintain that product because if that person is not there in the company and some other person replaces that person in that company, then if you want to maintain that software, if some errors occur, and if you want to change that code, if there is no documentation, it will be very difficult to maintain that software. So that's a problem. Then also efficiency won't be there and reliability, it will be very less. So it is poor maintainability, poor efficiency, and poor reliability. So and it also lacks good interface. And if there is no documentation, and it will be very difficult to maintain that software. Okay, that's an example for programs. So what is this program at all? So if you are developing it as a product, then it will become a it will have a good interface. There will be user manuals or documentations will be there. Uh, good documentation will be there. Then it will be very easy to maintain that software. Maintenance is an important part. If you consider the total cost of a software development, uh, forty percentage of the software development uh, happens up to testing only. After testing, sixty percentage of the cost will be for uh, maintenance. So if you want, if you, if some firm says that you want, they want ten lakhs to develop a software, then four lakhs is only needed to develop that software. The rest six lakhs will be for maintenance. That sixty percentage of the effort will be for maintenance. So that's the thing. Software development is a small part, but the maintenance. If you see WhatsApp, or if you are using all these softwares, WhatsApp, uh, Facebook, all these apps, uh, it was uh, developed in way back ten years or fifteen years back, but they are still maintaining it. So that maintenance cost will be high when can compared to that development cost. Okay. So in order to maintain this software, you should have some good documentation. Then only it will be you will be able to maintain the software. Then types of software development projects. So mainly we have uh, two types of software development projects. One is software products and software services. So software products means uh, just Office Suite or DBMS software. All these are uh, software products or even the driver software. All are considered as software uh, products. This operating system itself is a software product. Then software services means it's a customized software. So if you are developing a software for a bank, then it is a customized software. Or if you are developing some software for some tax for tax payment, or you are developing some campus management software for colleges. So it is all, these are all customized software. So these are known as software services. So software product is a generic software. Uh, it can be used by everyone. But in the case of software, oh, WhatsApp, Facebook, all, all come under the software products. But software services means it's developed for a particular organization or particular institution. We will try to develop some software. Then those softwares are known as software services. So what is the problem with this Indian companies is Indian companies are developing only the software services. We don't have any products. We don't have any uh, Microsoft Windows. or We don't have any uh, uh, product like Office. Or we don't have any DBMS software. So of all the software, so uh, all the Indian companies are software services companies. So it depends on some other firms. So if those uh, firms fail, automatically our Indian companies will also uh, will also fail. That's the problem with the software companies, and this is a crisis that is developing. So uh, Indian companies might fail at any time. If you're going to a software job tomorrow, Indian companies will automatically fail because we don't have any products. Uh, certain companies might have some products, for example, Pinnacle software of this um, Infosys. It is used, uh, it's a banking solution. So it is used by many of the uh, banks, but still it's used by only those banking sector. We don't have a, some generic software. Indian companies don't have this generic type of software. If these generic softwares are not there, then automatically these companies might fail uh, if the other parent companies or the services companies fail. For example, if there is a, a law, law, slowdown in America or US, if there is a slowdown, all the insurance companies, all the banking companies will 
uh, layoff. So what happens is it will affect our India software companies also because most of the uh, our clients are US insurance or bank companies. So that's the problem with the software services. Okay. Next, we'll see uh, exploratory style of software development. So it's an uh, informal development. Uh, we have already seen this. We are it's an informal way of development. Uh, the, here, the programmer makes use of his own intuition. He will try to develop his own data structure. He will try to use his own data structure. There's no uh, hardcore principles that should be followed. He will do something, and sometimes he will get the result. There is no systematic way. It is complete freedom for the program. So he will start with an initial briefing from the customer. Then what he does is he directly goes to coding. This is from the customer. He gets the requirement. Then he directly goes to coding. Then what it does is uh, he tests the software. He tests the code that is written. He will test it. Okay, test it. It's difficult to write with this. Okay, he will test this. And uh, if it fails, if there is some error, what happen? What he does is he will modify it. Okay, modify it. He will modify it. So he he will test it. Uh, if there is some failure, he will modify it. Again, he will test it. Like this, it will go on. Then again, he will. Uh, if there is some errors, he will modify it. Again, test it. Like this, it will go on. So he will start with the customer. He will interact with the customer. Uh, he, he directly gathers the requirement. And from the requirements, he the code. After writing the code, he will test it. If there is, uh, if there is no, then he will go he will release that software if there if there is some error then he will again modify it again go back test it modify like this it will go on like this so this is the way uh, expertise style of development so if that uh, works satisfactorily of course then he can release that software so this is the way expertise style goes so there is an informal development method it is based on its own intuitions there is no systematic approach for this the program has a complete freedom to do it. So, what is wrong with this exploratory style? <laughs> so, there will be exponential growth of development time and effort with problem size. So, what happens is if you are developing a so small software, then it won't be a problem. So, as a problem, there won't be any, uh, I'll mention lines of code here. It's a number of lines, or so we can call it program size. Okay, lines of code or program size. Uh, this is uh, time, y axis, it is time, uh, effort, development time, development effort, and complexity. Okay. So, initially, if it is a, a com less complex and less uh, software and all, development of expertise style as the program size goes it will go like this okay. effort will increase as the lines of code increase effort time to develop and the complex the complexity also increases uh, automatically this will go like this this curve will go like this but if you are using some uh, software engineering principles the curve will be like this it will be an ideal curve and if you are using some automated principles then it will be like this this is based on software engineering principles. And if you are using some tools, automated software tools, then uh, again, we can uh, reduce the cost or reduce the effort or reduce the time. So it will go on like this. So initially, both will be same. Uh, all the programs will be same, almost like this. The curve will go like this. Almost the three curves. Initially, uh, if it is small software and all, uh, all the curves will be same. That is, development effort, time, uh, cost, everything will be same for small software. As the complexity increases, then the time to develop or the effort to develop will also increase for exploratory style. So this is for exploratory style of development. That is, we are not following any principles, then it will be go like this. If it is a huge software, it will, we won't be able to develop that software at all. So, but we are following a software engineering principle, the curve will be like this. So this is a software engineering principle curve. And if you are using some software engineering tools also, then you, you can reduce the effort a little more. So here, exponential growth will be there of development time and effort in the case of exploratory style of development. Okay, As the problem size grows, the effort and time 
required to develop will grow exponentially. It's an exponential growth. Okay. So problems that require one million lines of code can't be solved at all. That's a study they have made. If you require one million lines of code in a single product, it will. It will be, if you are following that exploratory scale, it will fail. You won't be able to develop that software at all. And also, psychological complexity of a problem concerns difficulty uh, level experienced by programmer. Uh, psychological complexity. We have a shortcoming. That's why we should follow the software in principle. As a problem size grows, our psychological complexity also increases. And the, what is this psychological complexity? We will see uh, what is what do you mean this psychological complexity. So we'll see the shortcomings of exploratory uh, style. Exponential growth of development time and effort with problem size will be there. It results in unmaintainable code. As a uh, size grows, it results in unmaintainable code. There won't be any documentation. It will be very difficult to maintain such kind of softwares. Then difficult in team development also. There won't be any proper communication between this team if you follow this exploratory style of development. People won't be able to follow this thing. Uh, we cannot communicate with each other. We cannot say this person has written like this. The other person should do like this. There won't be any proper communication. So it is very difficult to maintain and also difficult for communication also. <coughs> well, we will see what you mean by this perceived um, problem complex. Okay. So this is why uh, expertise self fails. Uh, problem due to the perceived complexity of a problem, as the problem size grows, this perceived problem complexity also increases. So it is because of our human psychology, we have a limitation. We humans have a limitation. We our memory has two distinct parts. Human memory has two distinct parts. One is short term memory, and second is long term memory. Short term memory, it is some information that will be short for a short while. So if you are listening to this lecture, you will be storing everything for a short while. You will be storing this information for a short while. Uh, maybe after, maybe today, after today evening, you will be able to remember all these things. Maybe tomorrow also you will be able to remember all these. Maybe after one week, if I ask something, you will forget this because you have not revised it. If the short term memory is a short term. Everything, whatever you here for the first time, it will be stored in the short term memory, and that information will be lost. If you want to store it in the long term memory, uh, what you have to do is uh, you have to revise it. You have to re revise it uh, two, three times, then it will be automatically stored in the long term memory. And that long term memory is permanent and will be available. Even after 10 years, that will be there. But even though you will be forgetting that time, if you try to uh, revise it again, you automatically everything will come into your mind. So that's the difference between the short term memory and long term memory. Whatever you hear for the first time, it will be stored in the short term memory. Nothing will be stored in the long term memory. So as uh, you go, go on revising this thing, you will be uh, storing it in the long term memory. A short term memory of a person can store only seven items. It is It differs from person to a person. As per your psychologist, you can store only uh, seven items, seven items. It can be anything. Seven items in a short term memory. Yes. In certain people, it will be seven plus or minus two. Maybe uh, it will range from five to nine. We can say five to nine. And most of the people can store uh, seven items at a time. Uh, so, for example, uh, if I say, uh, I will say the difference. I will show the difference between the short term memory and long term memory. If I say that time is now 12 noon, so how many hours are there to complete this day? What will you say? You can easily say, you have 12 more hours. This day will end. You can say, well, say like that. Because so what I have asked is, it, now it is. 12 a.m., 12 noon. Now, uh, how many hours are remaining in this day to complete this day? This is stored in the uh, short term memory. That 10, uh, 12 p uh, noon, 12 noon. You have stored it in the short term memory. And the second question is there. If it, uh, the question is there, so, question or so if, uh, if the time is 12 noon, 
how many hours are remaining in the uh, how many hours are remaining for this day you will say well 12 manikku ungal undanne ningalku elappa parayan pattu because in a short term memory you have only one data 12 noon i am there 12 noon ini 24 hours old and you have it in your long term memory ningalku ariya oru divasam it is 24 hours that is there the long term memory so you have fetched that 24 hours from the memory long term memory then you processed it inside your brain you have processed it 24 minus 12 it is 12 hours so that is the difference between short term memory and long term memory long term memory it is there 24 hours makes one day it is there in your memory i have not mentioned that uh, i have may not mentioned the question that there is 24 hours i have just mentioned now it is 12 noon how many hours are remaining this day so your brain automatically calculated that there are 12 more hours to complete this day so that long term memory that 12, 24 hours is stored so you have taken that thing from the uh, long term memory and you subtracted and you you are given this result so similarly this uh, you when you say something you will store it in the short term memory only and there is something in the long term memory you will fetch that thing and you will get the details from the long term memory so the short term memory of a person can store only seven items so that is a problem you will see this magical number 7 later mm, long term memory so there is no definite top of what you can store any number of items in your uh, long term memory it is unlimited size athra size ulla there is no database uh, as your brain brain le store yana athra data where uh, onnil store yan pattilla you might you might uh, think of any uh, terabytes or gigabytes athra bits vanengil you can store it in your memory Uh, that that is there is no uh, definite upper bound for this long term memory several billions to millions to billions uh, billions items can be stored in your memory so item can be anything that it can be a variable a simple uh, number or it can be a fruits all these are considered as items so once stored it will be retained for several years so whenever you store something in the long term memory it will be retained for several years The items present in short-term memory can get stored in long-term memory through refreshment. So as long as soon as you revise these things, all those things will be stored in your long-term memory. After that, permanent asset. Otherwise, everything will be in your short-term memory. For so example, uh, for example, if you are asked to, if you are using your old landline number, and you, if you have to dial your numbers. earlier days if you have used if you are familiar using this lang phone numbers automatically you know all these numbers by heart if you ask to dial a number you will simply press it you don't have to refer any book at all just to contact a phone and call you will dial that number your 10 digit numbers all automatically it was stored in your long term memory as you repeat as you had repeated this operation sir apa engal arengalum vilikkunnathu several times if you have repeated that thing, you will be storing it in the short term memory long term memory initially it will be in the short term memory if you are redialing it if you are trying to dial it 10 times or 20 times automatically that number will be there uh, that number will be stored in the long term memory pinna ningal onnu refer endi vachu so that's the thing ningal you will be storing it in the uh, long term memory so item it can be any set of related information it can be a word can be sentence it can be store story uh, can be also a single item because you remember you all remember that uh, turtle and this hare story a uh, race pandu pano ketta but that story is still in your brain as a single item so those kind of things will be everything can be considered as an item so each item occupies one space in memory then what we have to do this in order to overcome this uh, seven magical number what we have to do is we have to do this chunking this is forming one item from several items so if you have gone through some memory test and school like you might have done this memory test you will be shown several 20 items in a room and you will be asked to remember all these things and write it in a paper per room you have to write all this 20 items so what you have to do is people try to establish some connections between these items uh, they try to group these items nammal adine group cheyan nokku appo there are 20 items and if you try, try to divide it into seven groups seven groups at divide cheyna your memory will be able to store that thing because seven items up to seven items can be stored in your short term memory 50 items undengilum 
if you can group it into seven seven groups that's a magical number seven nu rank karnu our brain le seven items namak pattu even if it's a phone number if you try to uh, group it into chunks at the phone jide if 0484 it is ernakulam code that's a single chunk. then two every number will start with two next ernakulam the most numbers will be like 33 so 2 3 3 will be groups together then finally another group of three digits like that you can so even if you are remembering some uh, mobile phone numbers of 10 digit you will be grouping it into uh, and you will be storing so 974729 like that you will be grouping it into two digits 974729119 like that you will be grouping it and you will be storing somehow you will be managing to store so if you have formed that like chunks you will be able to store several items several items in single item so adana namaku overcome cheyan pattuna method in order to overcome that limitation of seven items appo namaku 100 items undengilum you can store if we can develop group it into seven groups so uh, evidence of ഡീലിംഗ് വിത്ത് സെവൻ ഓർ ലെസ് നമ്പർ ഓഫ് ഐറ്റംസ് അൺറിലേറ്റഡ് ഇൻഫർമേഷൻ ആണെങ്കിൽ അറ്റ് എ ടൈം ദെൻ ഇറ്റ് കാൻ ബി അക്കോമഡേറ്റഡ് ഇൻ ദ ഷോർട്ട് ടേം മെമ്മറി ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് വാട്ട് മിൽ ആർ ഫൗണ്ട് ഔട്ട് സോ ഇഫ് എ പേഴ്സൺ ഡീലിംഗ് വിത്ത് സെവൻ ഓർ ലെസ് നമ്പർ ഓഫ് അൺറിലേറ്റഡ് ഇൻഫർമേഷൻ ഇവൻ ഇഫ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് റിലേറ്റഡ് ടു ഗ്രൂപ്പ് വി കാൻ സ്റ്റോർ ഇറ്റ് ഇൻ ദ മെമ്മറി സോ ഇൻ ഓർഡർ ടു ഓവർകം ദിസ് ലിമിറ്റേഷൻ ഇതിനെ നമ്മൾ ഹ്യൂമൻ പെർസെപ്ഷൻ കോംപ്ലക്സിറ്റി എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് പെർസെപ്ഷൻ perceived complexity na the human cognition complexity like perceived problem complexity na the this thing uh, only seven different items can be stored in a short term memory so if you are writing a uh, huge, uh, huge amount of code there will be hundreds of variables that will be there so you that person who is writing that code won't be able to remember what a particular variable is for a uh, number of items kooduna anusarichittu that complexity of that problem grows so that be a person won't be able to write proper code adha is e short term memory la id store idirikkunnu nammal or code cheyumbo etra elements undu that namaku 100 variables varu ee 100 variables in that person can won't be able to remember all those things so adu undana that code fail yan karane when we could follow this expert this type so in order to overcome this we have brought the software engineering principles we can overcome cheyan vendittan we have deployed software engineering to overcome this human cognitive limitation this is a human cognitive limitation we can store only seven unrelated information so in order to overcome this nammal kondu vanna principles are two principle in software engineering is abstraction and decomposition these two based on these two principles we develop the software engineer abstraction and decomposition end eduthal there will be abstraction and decomposition okay i think you don't have next hour also appo pinna korchu oru 12 12 ayalu we will continue for 5 or 10 minutes okay uh our two principles are the abstraction and decomposition so these two principles are brought because uh, to overcome that human limitation cognitive limitation overcome them in it so what is with this abstraction so it is a simplification of a problem by focusing only one aspect of that adine we call it as abstraction learning so we simplify a problem by focusing only one aspect of a particular problem so if you want to understand uh, example varnaya if you want to have a physical map is an abstract model of country ignoring state boundaries so we have a physical map it is a abstraction abstract model of a particular country from that map we can see various things uh, what all states are there like that we can get an abstract thing. abstraction is actually hiding the inner details we will be hiding the inner details only the abstract view will be available if you take another example uh, make a cup of coffee it's an abstraction karna idite agathu there are different things that should be happen if you want to make a cup of coffee you have to take a water you have to take milk you have to add sugar or 
or your bad coffee all those things should be uh, done so it's an abstraction all agartha vekkana or vaad saadhanangal undu adinte ellathinte abstraction a make up cup of coffee nare it's an abstraction or wash some clothes in laundry adinath ishtam pole karyangal cheyanu nammal washing machine le edanam powder edanam mattedu edanam set cheyanu idu set cheyanu it's an abstraction so if we could abstract all those things what right? i mean if we develop software if we try to abstract those things then we can live uh, overcome this human cognitive limitation and uh, first abstract so physical map is an abstract model of country that because physical map gives uh, mountains or lakes uh, rivers coastlines everything will be stored in that physical uh, thing okay then we have political maps also you have studied the political maps it contains all those states capitals national boundaries everything will be there in the political map also So it's an abstract model. It's an abstraction. No one can parse. Physical map is an abstraction of a country. Okay. Then second approach is uh, decomposition. So decomposing problem, you know what you mean by decomposition? We will try to develop into small independent parts. In in order to develop uh, develop a huge software, we try to split it to different modules. So if you want to develop a WhatsApp like software, what you have to do is you have to develop into different modules you try to divide to different modules you will say text messaging other where module then voice chat another module then video chat the another module like that it is another module so you can decompose a huge problem into small independent parts so this way you can uh, uh, overcome the human cognitive complexity problem human cognitive problem so what we try to do is we try to divide it into Three to seven modules. That's the thing what you used to do in software. We try to divide it into three to seven different functions. If we have more than seven functions, also we try to divide, uh, combine two functions and try to make it three to seven. That's the limit. That's the thing we have to do. If you want to develop a software, also we'll learn later on in design and all. You will study why this three to seven and all. So if you want to develop, you try to decompose into uh, three to seven items, different items. and in each sub module you can again have three to seven items again in each module you can have different three to seven modules sub modules like that it will go on it is it, like a tree it will be like a tree straight structure there will be a main software in the at the root node then you try to divide it into seven modules then again in each module you can have again sub modules like three to seven sub modules will be there like that it will go on so if you decompose a huge software like that then it will be you can overcome that uh, human cognitive problem so small parts can be solved one by one like that so example it's a where book would better understand when contents are decomposed into chapters that's why we uh, we have this contents chapter and also if we are dividing into different chapters it will be very much more easier so if we are uh, putting it all together in a single chapter it will be very difficult we can simply decompose into different chapters and it will be easier to read similarly in software also we try to develop uh, in a similar manner then why should we study software engineering so software engineering uh, if we study it is a uh, skill to participate in development of large software and to effectively handle development complex so you should study the software engineering if you are going into a software field and all you have to develop in a uh, you have to be in a team of uh, be team in the development team of a large software then you need the skill and also to handle this complexity also development complexity you have to learn this software engineering then only you will be able to develop softwares so these are some uh, introduction about emergent software engineering earlier computer programming was written in assembly language and had not you know all these things then later on high level uh, language programming came Uh, in high level programming language after that there was a uh, control flow based design then it there was data structure oriented design then came data flow oriented design object oriented design then there were different aspect oriented design all these things late on so it was earlier days it was uh, ad hoc thing this exploratory style we have already seen then came high level language programming when basic or such programming language came they tried to develop code then it was control flow design control flow based on control flow 
uh, how the controls flow it was everything was designed then it was data structure oriented design we tried to develop the data structures based on the data structures we tried to develop the software then we tried to develop the data flow oriented approach we studied the data flow and based on that we tried to develop the software after that we came with the object oriented approach where we have a big tasks and all we study all this later so this is an example for this control flow so it indicates sequence in which programs instructions are executed control control flow is like this so we have a code like this then the control flow graph will be like this all this initialization has happened here then if a equal to 2 then we have to do this or we have to do this and then finally both after this we have to do this thing after this so it shows the control flow how the code goes works like this so what happened Uh, CFG had many go to statements like this: go to A, go to C, go to B. So it will be we have to go to like this. So it looks very difficult, or to the, it was very difficult to maintain such kind of. Code. So there had many different go to statements. Then came the structured programming. So go to states. We restrict the use of this go to statement. So avoid, we will avoid this unstructured control flow. and it should be modular readable and it will be easy to maintain that's the advantage of structured programming structured programming and we use structured programming function or in program like that it goes goes on okay in structured programming we have only these three statements that are structured program sequence statements selection statements and iteration statement so these three statements will be there these three different types of statements will be there based on this programs will be written so it will have a definite structure and we try to avoid this go to state then came data structure oriented approach here the first data structures are designed then code structure is designed based on this data structure uh, jackson structure programming there was an approach in software engineering then are there any doubts okay then uh, data flow oriented approach uh, here desired outputs are determined by identification of major data items handled in the system uh, processing required data items we represent using data flow diagrams so that you might have studied during your software engineering or you might have studied this thing when you developed your project and all you might have drawn data flow diagrams so it was data flow oriented how the data flows from one section to another section so based on that we try to develop this software that was data flow oriented approach so this is an example for data flow diagram we will study all these things later so this is an example for data flow diagrams so we have different kinds of entities and all okay. so after that aspect oriented programming client server design embedded software design everything came so the kachuma vaichu chinadi so notable changes uh, one is uh, from error correction exploratory we have uh, developed from exploratory style to requirement specification we used to have uh, we need to have a look into this requirement specification that is an important thing rather than going for exploratory style requirement specification is an important part then we have a distinct dis design phase there will be periodic reviews in software engineering then there will be standard testing techniques then visibility of software Move. So all these things were added to the software engineering things. So the company did pretty good. Projects are thoroughly planned. All we, everything we have quantitative metrics. We can measure everything in software engineering. Uh, we can measure the cost. We can measure whether that code is good or bad. Everything can be done based on this quantitative metrics. All these things added based when we develop this software development. ഇതൊക്കെ വന്നത് ഇതെല്ലാം സോഫ്റ്റ്വെയർ എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് വന്നതിന് ശേഷമാണ് ഓക്കെ സോ ഫൈനലി വാട്ട് ഇസ് ദിസ് കമ്പ്യൂട്ടർ സിസ്റ്റം എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് ദിസ് ഇസ് വാട്ട് ഹാപ്പൻസ് ഇൻ കമ്പ്യൂട്ടർ സിസ്റ്റം എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് വി വിൽ കണ്ടക്ട് എ ഫീസിബിലിറ്റി വെൻ വി അപ്രോച്ച് എ പ്രോബ്ലം വി വിൽ കണ്ടക്ട് എ ഫീസിബിലിറ്റി സ്റ്റഡി വിൽ ട്രൈ ടു സ്റ്റഡി വെദർ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഫീസിബിൾ ഓർ നോട്ട് ടെക്നിക്കലി ഫീസിബിൾ ആൻഡ് എക്കണോമിക്കലി ഫീസിബിൾ ആണ് നോക്കുക ദെൻ വി വിൽ ഡൂ ദിസ് റിക്വയർഡ് സ്പെസിഫിക്കേഷൻ അനാലിസിസ് ആൻഡ് സ്പെസിഫിക്കേഷൻ after that if it is hardware software partitioning is needed hardware and software on thing we will separately develop this hardware development and we will develop software development will be done separately we will design everything will be done design coding everything will come under this 
software development after that we will integrate do this testing integration testing testing ivada mathramalla inside this development also testing will happen after that both we will try to integrate and test and finally maintenance will be after testing after releasing the software that maintenance phase will start and throughout this there will be a project management that will be happening everything project management where uh, some and you won't be studying all this management things but uh, some of the management things will be done like cost estimation uh, effort estimation everything management uh, throughout valley uh, valley companies throughout uh, software so well not only to unpack a bit they have a separate software project management team itself they will be managing studying all this develop software how to improve the software how to improve the quality idella they will be studying software quality assurance like everything will be done by this project management team so basically these are the steps in software development okay then a couple of details at next you padi okay thank you that's all so this is what we have studied uh, evolution software development projects we have studied about exploratory style then how emerges how the software engineering has emerged and notable changes that has happened after the software engineering came and we have gone through this computer system Okay. Mm. Hello.